Hello, my name is Phil Griffiths. I'm CEO of Business Risk Management, uh, working with Informa here for almost 20 years in the region. Um, I've been in many different roles, in roles spanning risk management, internal audit, fraud prevention, etc. I'd like to talk about the program on ERM, Enterprise Risk Management. First, talk about some of the trends and concepts within Enterprise Risk Management. Um, nowadays, risk management is more about what do you need to get right rather than what can go wrong. Unfortunately, risk is, tends to be as a very negative topic. It shouldn't be a negative topic. It should be something that people regard as something they can do well and do better and achieve from it. So we tend to look at this issue of enterprise risk management being a top-down process, something with senior management buy into, and this can apply to any aspect of the organization. For example, how we do a budget, maybe we should do a budget top-down rather than bottom-up. So this course tries to look at these from a slightly different way and try and also look at opportunities as well as risk. If you flip a risk over, you can create an opportunity. So I'd like to talk about the steps, how to implement an ERM process in your organization. It's important to realize that risk has been around forever. It's not new, but the formalized approach to risk management is still relatively new. The important thing here, the steps to, to implement are, first of all, build on what you're already doing, look at the things that are going well, and try and create a process to do that. The other one is also try and keep it as simple as you possibly can because I see processes which are enormously complex and nobody buys into them. It's not possible for people to understand that. So I'm a great believer in trying to create it as simple and straightforward as, the, as you can. Um, and also maybe when you start, try and get some quick wins. Try and get things that people can buy into and do more of rather than trying to go for the very difficult, complex issues. I think if you try and get some wins initially, it's going to make a huge difference in terms of the program and then you can roll it out to more complex areas. I'd like to talk about risk standards. As you may know, there's many different standards about risk. Uh, there's some that's de dealt with by COSO, the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations in the US. Uh, there's also the Institute of Risk Management, the professional body, and then there's also an ISO standard for uh, risk management. Uh, which is ISO 31000. People say, which of these should you use? Uh, to me, I don't think it matters hugely as long as you pick one and stick with it. People have been using COSO for some years. I would say continue with that. If you're starting from scratch or you're at the starting point, I would look at the ISO standard because it's internationally recognized. ISO has tried to pick the best pieces of all the other standards, put them together and create a framework that's easy and simple to follow. Okay, so let me talk about the do's and don'ts in terms of an ERM process. I think the most important thing is to recognize it needs to be done at different levels in the organization. And the best way to start is with facilitated workshops. Ideally do it with the top management first of all, and then take it down the organization in layers, almost like an onion. Don't do it in individual departments, try and do it across the organization, because you'll get a lot more out of it then. Um, also you need to have a very simple mechanism for measuring the benefits. Usually the scoring systems used by most organizations are very confusing and probably wrong. Um, if you multiply the impact and likelihood together, the chances are it's not going to give you the information you want. And yet 95% of organizations use that approach. In this particular training, we're going to try and explain why there's an alternative here and why many organizations are now moving to this. Um, the other thing to look at it from the don'ts point of view, don't issue people a list of risks first before you go to a workshop. Because if you do that, they won't be able to think of anything else. So if, they, if you say to them, here's 40, can you think of any more? They can't. So I would say try and give them a frame of reference, but only that. And then also, finally, I would say the don't is don't assume risk management is going to be a quick fix. It won't be. It's going to take you a while to be able to, to look at this, and you can also use it to change the culture of your organization. I'm going to talk about reputation risk. Probably the biggest risk to most organizations is damage to reputation. And yet, unfortunately, it's the one that's least well understood. Many organizations don't have a risk workshop on reputation risk. Reputation is all about external factors. Very, very simple to damage reputation. Very difficult to build it back. So we look in this particular course at quite a great deal of focus on how to actually understand reputation and the risks associated with it and how to manage it better. The final thing I'd like to talk about is how to use the ERM process to take it through the organization and involve all management and staff.
The intention is to try and get it at every level in the organization and make sure that everybody's engaged from the start so they see it as a benefit ultimately. This means you've got to measure the benefits afterwards but make sure you issue the output to everybody as well because the problem is if only some people see it that's going to be very awkward. This can then be a basis for decision making. You don't want your people to understate the risk and then make a decision and found the risk is higher. So the important message is this is somebody for everybody in the organization. Everybody Everybody's got objectives, and therefore everyone's got risks, therefore everybody's actually a risk manager. My name is Sultan Al Nasur. I work for the Abu Dhabi government in the energy sector, power, water, utilities. This is one of the few courses that I've attended over the last couple of years with regards to risk management. But why this one in particular? A, I needed a refresher for the certificates that I've already achieved in the past. Um, I looked at the credentials of the instructor. Uh, definitely met all the criteria that we were looking for, not just for myself, but we're looking at taking this further to executive management and mid-level management and see whether it's a course that's something that could be viable for the rest of them as well, something that they could learn from. Because, you know, at the end of the day, enterprise risk management isn't just the job of the risk manager, which is myself there, but it's everyone. So. You could say that this was somewhat of a vetting process as well. I learned something, new techniques, new methodologies that are new to me that have been evolved through the last four or five years that I've taken such a course and it's going to be a good feedback for the rest of my company and the HR to include it as part of the subsequent training and development programs. Hi, my name is Ram Jatan. I come from Mauritius. The name of my institution is MCS Mutual Aid Association Limited. It's a non-bank deposit taking institution. We provide loan to civil servants and we accept deposits from the public. We also have a retirement saving product and uh, I work as Deputy Chief Executive Officer. I joined the Informa Enterprise Risk Management course as part of the Overseas Development Training Program and it is the first time that I am attending Informa training courses. My colleagues come each year two to three managers come each year, so this is my first experience with Informa. I learned a lot from the course, it is very interesting. I got a lot of good stuff that I think I can implement at my organization because as part of the regulatory requirement, enterprises management is a must and I look forward to implementing a lot of things that I learned from the course. Um, Dr. Phil is a very good uh, lecturer, the course is very interesting. It's very down to earth, very practical, not boring at all. And uh, I thank Dr. Phil for giving a very good lecture and I thank Informa as well for providing a much uh, better course and I hope that in future also I will attend other courses of Informa. Thank you very much.